satisfaction, satisfaction, service, electric cable TV, too members of the East Penn Conference, but not anymore with Whitehall coming in as the Mountain Valley Conference champ, and Emmaus the runner-up. Their roles from a year ago are reversed. They met in the semifinals a year ago where Emmaus was the number one seed, but Whitehall knocked them off on the way to the championship game. Uh, Whitehall played a very good game last year. They won by 13, Mike, only to get into the finals to lose to Easton, and Easton was your District 4A champ, but certainly this year we see a young Emmaus basketball team would like to reverse the outcome of last year's game. Mayus has advanced to this point in the season, beating uh, uh, Pleasant Valley in the quarterfinals. They are under the direction of head coach Bill Pugh, who is in his first year since taking over for Phil Armstrong. Now, this is the fourth straight year they have made it to the district semifinals, but first under Coach Pugh. Uh, Co Coach Pio has done an excellent job bringing his team to a 17-8 and 8 record to get them to this point, Mike. And certainly the experiences they've gathered in their, their postseason play is going to help them, league play and postseason play, to help them to get involved in this big contest tonight. 17 and 8 overall, 5 and 3 in the East Penn Conference, and of course they did lose to Central for the overall title. One of the things that really sticks out for them, Coach, is they are 5 and 0 oh against Mountain Valley Conference teams. Psychologically, again, that's a nice feeling to have coming into this basketball game. Certainly, that should pay some nice dividends from from the emotional standpoint. Most of the points from last year's semifinals are gone, but uh, some of them are there and in the form of Lindsey Gaysis. Lindsey Gaysis is an outstanding young player, Mike. She's an up-and-coming star in this league. Really She's only a sophomore, and she has put up some nice numbers already. She's having 11 points a game, knows how to distribute the basketball to her teammates, and looks for her co-partner, Megan Stork. Stork has really come into her own offensive zone this at the end of the season. You take the last six games, and she's averaging 16.5 points a game. Although coming into the end of the season, averaging 12, she put up some big numbers in their win over Pleasant Valley, scored 25 points, was responsible for getting the team into the overtime by a clutch basket. So if you want a player on a roll, I think Emmaus has one in Megan Storch. Zephyrette's come in, in here also under first-year head coach Todd Payton. After starting the year at 2-3, and three, they have now won 19 of their last 20. They're 21-4 and four at one point, had a 17-game winning streak, and of course they are coming off that win over Stroudsburg, which gave them their first league crown in over a decade. A convincing win over Stroudsburg, by the way, winning by 16, Mike, so they, they're really in a nice rhythm as a basketball team. Everybody seems to be playing well together. Perhaps the only thing that might be a concern now is they haven't played for a number of days. Now, if you look at their four losses, three of them have come to East Penn Conference schools. They lost to Central, Allen, and Deeroff, so they have to be somewhat concerned here this evening. Absolutely. Both teams respect each other, and I think knowing that those records that, that they've created in terms of winning and losing against the various leagues are going to play a minor part tonight, though. Both teams understand, though, they can change the fate of their team with hustle and desire and good play. Now, while Emmaus lost most of their performers from a year ago, Whitehall returns all but five of their points from last year's semifinal wins, and of course it all centers around junior Mary Lasicki. Uh, Mary, Mary Lasicki, again, is a very nice basketball player. She's a junior this year. She's matured over last year. She's averaging 13 points a game. She, too, can distribute the basketball for her team. She plays excellent defense, and also, like Emmaus, there are more components on the Whitehall team besides Mary Lasicki, though. Jen Clock has been a, a go-to girl the whole year, and I think in the middle, Megan Ballard has held her own. She's a presence that they're going to have, Mayus is going to have to deal with. So both teams have a num number of people who can step up their offense and play good defense tonight. Well, we had such a great week last week. Are you ready to get it going? Absolutely. We're <laughs> ready to go, and I think we're going to see two good ball games tonight. I don't think there's any doubt about that as the District 11 playoffs continue to move on. The winner of this one will get either Stroudsburg or Liberty. Starting lineups are coming your way right here on TV2 Sports. This is the sticker at a typical used car lot. It gives some useful information, but there's one very important thing missing, the price. Here at the Scott Lot, you'll always find at least 150 factory certified cars and trucks. Each one includes a rigid inspection and a bumper to bumper warranty. But best of all, the price is always clearly marked and it's probably the best price you'll find in the valley. Finally, a car lot made for browsing. Scott Lot on the Lehigh Street Auto Mile. Everyone knows the Brass Rail has terrific cheese steaks, but now there's another reason to visit the Brass Rail. Our great breakfast menu. Start your day off right with all-time favorites like Eggs Benedict with our unique breakfast potatoes or waffles with fruit topping. Or how about the house specialty, a cheese steak omelet? 
The Brass Rail has two convenient locations, 3015 Lehigh Street and the original Brass Rail at 1137 Hamilton Street. Begin your day at the Brass Rail, where our menu sets us apart. Call us, and we'll always deliver. That's because at Afgar Oil Company, you don't have to be an existing customer to receive sales or service from us. In fact, for over 50 years, Afgar Oil's team of professionals has serviced the entire Lehigh Valley area. And with our on-site, underground storage, we can always guarantee your delivery. Plus, we do electric heat to oil conversions for both commercial and residential accounts. Afgar Oil. Call us. Wait! Here at C.J. Wagner's, only the finest materials are used to make the Lehigh Valley's most attractive trophies and awards. Using the most modern state-of-the-art computerized engraving system, we can digitize your custom logo and transfer that onto any award you choose. Featuring the personalized service that has become a trademark, the experts at C.J. Wagner's can help you award, promote, or feature your group through thousands of items. Visit the area's leading trophy, awards, and ad specialty company, and we also offer the finest in bowling supplies. District 11 semifinals, girls 4A, a rematch of last year's game. That was played at Dura High School, and of course that one was won by the uh, uh, Zephyrettes on their way. Then they moved on and uh, lost to Easton in the District 11 4A final game. Uh, a couple of games later, you are looking at the Emmaus Green Hornets being introduced. They will be the visitors on the scoreboard. They are the number five seed. Uh, coming in here, head coach is Bill Pugh. He's assisted by Rick Warman and Dave Zilfies. And, of course, last year, Rick Warman was the head coach of Whitehall. So there are a lot of side stories uh, to this contest as you look at Mary Lasicki, number 23, being introduced uh, to the crowd here. Mary is averaging 13-7 a game. Coming out now, number 41 is A.B. Saganowicz. Saganowicz is a 5-8 junior averaging a little over two points again jen clark what or clock what can you say about her efforts second team mountain valley conference all-star averaging 12-1 a game battling those back problems as we look at tonight's starters first of all for may is 17 and 8 creedon gayasich stork dylan and quay and for the zephyrettes the mountain valley conference champs it'll be wine lasicki saganowich clock and baliette al de carlo joins us here tonight al what do you have for us all right, Mike, I talked to both coaches. Todd Payton said the biggest key for them is handling the Emmaus guard you guys mentioned, and he's controlled about Megan Stork more so than Lindsey Gaius is. That's because of the last couple of games that she's been playing also play a half-court type of game. They're going to pressure a little bit and need to get a good inside-outside game from Megan Balliard. For Bill Pugh, he said defense is definitely the key to this game to come out with a W. Executing on offense, keep Megan Balliard off the board and play as a team. All year long, they have not played totally as a team, and this is the game. If they want to move on to the district final, they need to play together to win this game. Back to you. Whitehall 21-4. and four, Three of their four losses to East Penn Conference Schools, Central, Allen, and Duroff. Emmaus 17-8. and eight. Five of those 17 wins against Mountain Valley Conference Schools, Northampton, Pocono Mountain, Easton two times, and of course they advanced to tonight's game by beating Pleasant Valley 53-51 in overtime as the Zeps get things started on a field goal by number 44, Jen Clock. Mike, I think it's very important that the Hornets get off to a good start on both ends of the court. This is a young basketball team, and certainly it's going to be in their favor if they can settle in early and get into the, a nice rhythm on both ends of the court. Personal foul, our first gen clock. Her first team's first. 20 is Megan Stork. Actually, 
Now everybody had it down as 25 points for her over against Pleasant Valley. 27 is what the official scorekeeper gave me tonight. Oh, well, Lindsey Gayasic has the first deuce for Emmaus, and we are tied at two. Here's Lasicki. Of course, brothers Gabe and Pete, and the line, the, the list goes on and on for them. Outstanding performers at Whitehall High School. Emmaus employing a person-to-person -person defense. Oh, looks like Whitehall's running the flex offense. And here's a turnover. Here's Stork. Stork one-on-one. -on -one. It's Lasicki back defensively, and Stork up and under and off the window. And the Green Hornets have a 4-2 lead. Stork. Notice the Hornets get into a little pressure. A good move on Coach's part again to get his kids involved in the offense. How about Megan Stork, though, showing you her ability, Mike, to use the dribble to take the rock Mary Lasicki back a little bit and then take her one-on-one -on -one to the glass. Stork's having a tremendous season. She, of course, a transfer from Durop High School. And... I think whenever you use that word, everybody cringes. Her family moved out for away from the east side and into the Emmaus School District, and, you know, that's what happened there. So Deeroff's loss, of course, of, was Emmaus's gain. Here's Gayasitz missing the floater in the lane, and Mary Lasicki there for the rebound. It's nice to see Lindsay Gayasitz looking at the basket a little bit more, too, Mike. She is an excellent offensive player, very unselfish ball player. Here we see Megan Stork in transition again. She's very effective with the bounce, comes to the left side, a little too hard. Gayasitz with the rebound and the left hand. Lindsey Gayasitz knocks it down, Mike. 6-2 Hornets. Another look at it. Nice job of uh, Stork. I think Lasicki may have gotten a piece of that one, but nice job of running the floor by the Green Hornets. Gayasitz picks up her second field goal. Lindsey a 68% free throw shooter. She had 15 points and two threes in their uh, East Penn Conference loss to Central Catholic. Misses an opportunity. There's head coach Bill Pugh. Good job of Jess Creighton to come up with the loose basketball for the Hornets. They'll set the offense. 21 is Tara Dillon. Gaya sits, bodies fly hard to the court. No calls. Our officials for game number one, John Mitchell, Ron Moser, and Dennis Schonsenbach. I believe this could be the first... Uh, First time this year we've seen Dennis. Dennis, of course, is the assigner for the Colonial League. Here's a good second effort for Lindsey Quay. And Quay now will go to the free throw line. Kind of a spotty or choppy offense there by the Hornets, Mike, but Lindsey Quay did a good thing. Got a handle on the ball and just forced the offense, forced the defense to come and draw the foul so she'll get the shoot too. Quay, on the freshman team a year ago, averaged double digits. She is only a freshman. Averaging a little over five points per game on a season. 59 of 102 from the free throw line for 58% average. As we pointed out in the last game, we had Emmaus for the championship with the EPC, Mike. Only two seniors on this team, Jess Creeden and Kerry Munro. So really a very young basketball team to be in a nice position now to gain some valuable experience, and they would like to get into that final of the 4A girls. Lasicki aggressively to the basket, just heals the jump shot, and the rebound to the Green Hornets. Little trouble clearing, but here now is Gayosets. Lindsay, she's got a sister on the team, Emily, who is a freshman and seeing some meaningful minutes as of late. Hornets up 7-2. Stork. Nice move. Gayosets baseline. Yes, tough angle. Nice. Lindsay Gayosets does a great job with it. Good old-fashioned fake. We got a good use of the fake here, Mike. Ball fake to get the defense to move a little bit and then using the dribble to get down along the baseline and coming out nicely and finishing there. Stork passes it over again. Just got the defense to come out a little bit. Good job there again. Jen Wine got taken in by the ball fake and then a nice finish by Lindsey Gayasitz. And I said it last time we had her, I think this young lady is so unselfish that at times she has to look to create offense for herself off the dribble. She's that good. Moments ago, we were showing you Dr. Herman Cordetti, the fine principal here at Emmaus High School. Jim Davis, first-year principal at Whitehall High School. And, of course, both those men uh, ably uh, assisted by their athletic directors, Mr. Bob Kratzer at Whitehall and Dennis Ramella at Emmaus High School. 9-2. Yeah, there's the Service Electric Sports Challenge. Dave Howells. Basketball coach and Allen, interested spectator here this evening. 
That's the whole Howl clan there, isn't it? That's tough to say if you try to say that fast, isn't it? Whole Howl, Howl clan. clan came out all right. Sounded good to me. We're in the first quarter, 9-2. 9-2 Emmaus. Zephret starting out tonight a little bit cold. Miss again, trailing by seven. Stork, coach, how important is this start for Emmaus? They seem to be playing with a great deal of confidence right now. I, I thought it's very important, Mike. Again, we see Jess Frieden there get called for the walk. She shuffled that foot. It's a young team, Mike, and their first time around getting involved deep into the playoffs. And I think two things coach did that I like. One, he got pressure on the ball early, got his team to play an aggressive defense, and that'll hopefully take away those pre-game jitters and get them involved in, in the offense and the defense, and I think it's working well right now. We're at the midpoint of the first quarter. Here's Lasicki, left-hander. What a tough shot. Well, that's why Mary Lasicki is one of the best, Mike. At 5'8", the junior shows you her ability to elevate and use her left hand. Still in the other way, offensive foul because Megan Balliet, a nice job getting back defensively. Fans aren't going to be in agreement on that call, Mike, behind us at least. Megan Balliet does pick it up, and they viewed it in a different light, as always is the case. Well, they have Stork on a foul. Well, the Green Hornets picking up two in succession. First on Megan Stork. Amy Saganowicz to inbounds right in front of our vantage point at midcourt. Bounces the Jen Clock. Jen Clock, probably one of the toughest athletes that you're going to see in the Lehigh Valley, whether it male or female. We documented last year, last year how she was battling back problems. Coach, good luck to you, Rich. Rich Mattis stopping by, dropping off some stats for us. But Jen Clock, remember, she battles those back problems, and anybody who's gotten a bad back knows that. And at times has a rough time just getting up in the morning. And, you know, here she is, still banging away, and really is uh, a success story on the courts. And does a real good job for coaches, you point at Max. That banger hangs in there, yeah. does what she has to do to make her team better. Saganowicz, a 5'8 junior, averaging a little over two points a game. At times this year has struggled from the line, but gets a pair there. She's just a 48% free throw shooter. Well, the Zeph's on a little roll now, back to within three, nine, six. Nice little spurt by Whitehall, get back into this game. Nine, six, as you pointed out. Tighten it up on the D a little bit too. Whitehall's got a little bit more aggressive. There's good help. Maybe not all three are necessary. Number 51 for Whitehall, I believe, is going to get tagged. Megan Balliot is going to get tagged with the foul. But again, that's good help in recovery. There's a penetration by number 32, Lindsey Quay, for the Hornets. And then we see again, getting there just a little late, Megan Balliot picks up her first foul. Quay to the free throw line, had four points in the conference championship game against Central. Did not score in their overtime win against Pleasant Valley. Beat Pleasant Valley 53-51. Last time Whitehall played, they've had 10 days off they, since beating Stroudsburg. 65-47 for the conference crown. A pair for Quay and a lead up to five. 11-6 Emmaus. Nice matchup in front of us, Mike. Mary Lassie and Lindsay Gaisis. Two very, very fine athletes. Well, Mary looks a little taller and a little stronger mm -hmm. this year, doesn't she? And I mean, of course, you expect that. Last, She is only a junior. There are the Green Hornets the other way. Stork to jump stop, but shuffle the feet. I like the idea, though. Megan Stewart is very good with the bounce, Mike, and I like the idea that she challenges. Got a little bit there, uh, again, a little anxious and with the, with the walk, but I think, again, she, she's very effective in the open court, and she can take anyone one-on-one -on -one to the window. 2.48 to go, first quarter. It's been a good one, 11-6. I'll tell you, all the games have been good, haven't they? I mean, some intensity, you know, people playing with emotion. Of course, if you don't do it this time of year, you're, say, you're, you're not right, going Mike. to. And both teams are up for this. They realize the importance of getting into that final. As you pointed out early in the Open, they're going to have a chance to play two more games then, one for a title, and then represent us in the state playoffs. Both these teams very good defensively. Whitehall offensively averages 52-3 a game. Defensively, they give up 40.2 and only on three... Uh, uh, on two occasions, or just four times all year, have they given up better than 50. Saganowicz has her first field goal, and the lead now cut to three. Nice offensive putback. 
as Gaius sits on a wonderful delivery from Megan Stork. Uh, nice one-two combination, the old give and go, Mike. As simple as it is, it's very effective. Megan Stork picked it up, Lindsay finished. That's four field goals for eight points already for Lindsay Gayasitz. Boy, she's a good one. There's Jen Wine for three off the mark. Rebound and a good one to Jess Creedon. Creedon, of course, will play field hockey at Kent University. She's already signed. Gayasitz, Dillon. Oh, nice, another good pass, but Quay missed the peeper. Boy, there's a break for Whitehall. Uh, you talk about execution. They're doing it the right way, Mike. Not the finish there, but certainly good read here again. Nice movement there, number 32, Lindsey Quay. Just can't get enough of that rim. A little short on the shot, but good two-man game developing there. Good vision, good entry. Just didn't finish. Emily Silfie's number 22 is into the Emmaus lineup. There's a three ball for Mary Lasicki. First three for number 23, and Dad, as he normally does, doesn't show a whole lot of emotion. Well, Mary Lasicki has to be respected for perimeter shooting. That's the very first thing you have to take away from Mary. And then she can hurt you with the bounce, Mike, because she is an excellent penetrator. But if she has that much space, she'll put it up and very effective from the arc. Being heavily recruited by just about every Division I basketball program in the country, she will be able to write her own ticket. Of course, she is an honor roll student. She has been that way through, throughout her high school career. Knocked that one down for Emily Silfie. So Silfie's off the bench to have an impact. She only has 19 total points all year. Quickly the other way, though, Jen Clock has an answer. Both teams are in transition offense now, doing a good job of pushing the Barack up the court, taking advantage of miscues or poor defense. Good pass inside. Jess Frieden gets a handle on it. Good recovery by Jess there. That's that senior leadership, Mike. Good job of staying with the loose ball, picking it up, and then using the window to get herself to and keep her team up four. Well, I'll tell you, Rich, Whitehall averaging 40.2 points a game defensively, 17 points in his first quarter for Emmaus is a big number to get up against the Zephyrettes. Lasicki with 10 on the clock. They go back door, contact, and a foul. We'll send clock to the free throw line. Mike, you make a very good point because Whitehall is a very good defensive team. They are averaging 41 points on the defensive end. Here we get a look at Mary Lasicki again. Good, good decision with the basketball. There we see number 44, Jen Clock, getting the bump, the hit. She'll go to the line to shoot, too. Good delivery of the ball there by Mary Lasicki. But getting back to that point, Mike, I think it's very important that a team like Emmaus can get off to a good start against a very good defensive team like Whitehall. Score from the first game at Liberty. Stroudsburg is leading Liberty. And I forgot the score. I can tell you that they're leading. And here is 33-25 is 1.30 to go in the half. We have .9 here. That's where I lost my concentration. Time's running out here on a very high-scoring first quarter. That will miss, but 17-15 in favor of Emmaus back in a moment. Are you an athlete if you only play for bragging rights? What if you inherit your uniform? Are you an athlete if your toughest competition is yourself? What if your role model doesn't even play a sport? Or if you don't play sports at all, anymore? Are you an athlete? Always. Russell Athletic, durable clothing, made for the long run. Available at Bethlehem Sporting Goods. We are back. Let's take a look at Mary Lasicki. Boy, is that how many girls do you know can make that move? She is a right-hander. As she shows you right here, as she knocks down the three. I said that was her first field goal. How could you forget the first one? Five points for Mary in a very high scoring first quarter here. I think this is a surprise to everybody, including the coaches. Emea 17. Whitehall 15 as the Green Hornets turn it over 
And Whitehall will take possession. Now let me get things right. In the first game over at Parkland, which we, you will see here later on tonight, Stroudsburg is leading Liberty. They are getting close to the first half. We're going to try and keep you up to date on everything that's going around at site number two. I will warn you, uh, if you don't want to know scores of games coming up, some of our viewers do not want to know that. I'll give you a little time to maybe press the mute button from here on in. Miss Greenhorn an opportunity. And now the Zephyrettes pushing it down the other way. What a great job by Jen Clock. Uh, two good decisions, Mike. Run here on this end. Jen Clock deflects the ball her way as Megan Stewart takes it nice and strong and draws the defense and the foul. But I was going to comment on Jen Clock's ability to tap the ball away and then to have enough sense to understand that she can put, use the speed dribble to get down and beat the pack down for the bucket. Good job, Jen Clock. And now we see Megan Stork doing her thing. There's a nice job of tapping it out there. Good use of the bounce. Uses the window wisely. Coming under control. Use the glass to help you score. And we saw Megan Stork bring it back strong. Pick up a foul. Hornets will put it in play. Second tie of the game at 17. Didn't last real long as Lindsey Quay's having a fine night here tonight. A freshman. Green Hornets back up too. First quarter numbers. He may have 7 of 12. 59%. 3... 17 points, three turnovers. Whitehall, five of 13 with a three, four of four from the line. 15 points, they turned it over one time. Come the Green Hornets, but they turn it over. Let's still lead 19-17. Yeah, Megan Stork had the right idea. Lindsey Gaius, it's Mike, filled in the lane, just held the ball a tad long to get it to her teammate. Lindsey had a hard time tracking it down and get a handle on it. All right, I'm going to give you a score from halftime involving Liberty and Stroudsburg. If you do not want to know it, of course, that one's coming up after our live coverage of the boys' game here. If you don't want to know, quickly hit your mute button, and I'm going to give that score. The score at the half between Stroudsburg and Liberty. Stroudsburg is winning that one 34-25. Of course, the winners of these two games that we're talking about will play in Friday night's championship. Here's a turnover, but immediately the Zeps get it back. And a tough break as number 51, Balliette, just couldn't establish that pivot foot and maintain it. Mike, Megan Stork is doing a very good job on the offensive end, offensive end, but also on the defense. She's in a lot of help positions down there, seeking off her person at times. And again, getting a hand in there for a deflection or anticipating, giving again the Hornets a little bit more help defense and has paid some nice dividends. Approaching the six-minute mark of period number two, game number one here, we will be bringing you four all together on TV2, we have the two live ones, and then we will have same-night coverage of Stroudsburg Liberty. And 11 o'clock, it'll be the boys' 3A semifinal, Central Catholic and Lee Heighton. Gaya sits, dishes to Creedon. Creedon a little too long, and the rebound to Megan Balliot. We will also have extended coverage tomorrow afternoon, starting at 3.30 of the girls' 2A bracket, those two semifinals. The Green Hornets the other way. Gaya sits, misses. Balliette again the board, and here comes Lasicki. Numbers. Three on and, one, Mike. And the dish, and the conversion for Jen Clock. Nice job by Lasicki of running the break. Good fill by the players, Mike, as well, and a good three on one. Miscue on the part of the Hornets. Again, quick score like that, or a quick offensive set, sometimes leads to those fast breaks. And there we see Lindsey Gaya sits again, having a little trouble with that pivot foot. Turnover of Hornets. Tied at 19. Rich, as we're going to get a timeout, charge this one to Emmaus. Are you surprised at the pace of this basketball game? I am. For yeah. a, lot, a lot of reasons. And I, I, both teams are very good defensively, and both teams have found ways to get out, Mike, and get into transition and hurt the other team with their uh, good decisions in the open court. Bill Pugh, assisted by Rick Warman, the former head coach at Whitehall, and Dave Silfies. 17 and 8, 5 and 3 in conference play. You look over at Todd Payton. Payton, a 1988 graduate of Downingtown High School, or no other, so he should know a thing or two about girls and women's basketball. He didn't really excel as a basketball player there, had a knee injury, fought off some sicknesses, but then went on to East Stroudsburg, where he graduated in 93 and was a 1,000-point scorer there. 5.03 to go, first half. We are tied at 19 in a very entertaining basketball game. Turnover Whitehall. Mass again is doing a good job in their person-to-person -person defense, helping each other, keeping pressure on the ball, causing for those turnovers. Mass has turned it over six times, Whitehall five. A 
Nice post up there by Jess Creed. They just didn't get her the ball, though. She had the defense right where you want him, Mike. On the back, above the block. This ball just didn't arrive. Gaius sits now setting the Green Hornet offense. Both clubs stay with the person-to-person -person D the whole first quarter and as well as the second. Haven't seen a change of defense other than the pressure after it's made baskets or foul shots. A little spin move. Sits. Yeah, spin move. A little long on the jumper. Whitehall right now doing a very good job. Well, until they... Well, they'll say that was last touch by Emmaus. The Whitehall doing a good job of limiting Emmaus to one and done. Let's see if he... A rebound here. We got a hand on the ball there. Oh, and oh yeah. yeah. Mm. Lindsay Quaid did all she could to try to disrupt that possession and it looked like it went off of Whitehall, but official viewed it the other way. Melissa Hudak, number 33, a 5'4 senior into the Zeph's lineup. There's Wine. Wine coming off a good out, and they had really good offense against Stroudsburg. 17 from Wine, 18 from Jen Clock, 16 from Mary Lasicki. Uh, Mary Lasicki does a good job here. They isolate Mike and they get, she has Lindsay Gaius, it's coming to her. She already knows when she catches the ball that Lindsay is not in front of her, so she takes the step with the dribble to force the defense to commit and smartly draws the foul. 74 percenter from the free throw line. Wouldn't be a Lasicki if you couldn't shoot free throws, huh? She's earned the right to be there, I'm sure, competing with her brothers over the years. Excellent foul shooter of brothers, I should say, and of course, Mary herself being one in her own right. Speaking of brothers, we always fill you in on Pete. Gabe, by the way, is now a senior at East Tennessee State. They are playing the first round of the Southern Conference Tournament. Uh, they are playing tomorrow against Citadel. Gabe has uh, earned a starting spot. He has started the last 10 games. He's playing about 20 minutes a game and averaging 7, 8 points a game. 14 and 14 on the year for East Tennessee State. Megan Stork back into the Emmaus lineup as Whitehall now has their second lead of the game they led briefly they went out to a 2-0 lead and then it was all just about Emmaus tied at 2 17 and 19 and the white all Zephyrs now have a two-point lead and we have an injury over there and that's Lasicki over there gonna get some attention of course everybody held their collective breath with Mary when uh, looked like she may have had a looks like she has some kind of a wound there some kind of a cut there she just gets some tape, but uh, it was, uh, first of all, diagnosed that she may have uh, broken a finger or a thumb, but it turned out it was just some ligaments, and obviously okay, because there isn't even any tape on anything. And of course, that can be injury that can affect the team, no doubt about it. Gaius Hitz gets the first. It's a one-point game. Pair for Lindsey Gaius Hitz, and we are knotted at 21. Lindsay being a two-eyed shooter there. Mike, notice how the ball's on the right-hand side. Rick Patino's school of foul shooting. Both eyes on the basket. Nice job of, with the mechanics. I learned something there. Okay, 10 points for Gayasitz. Hey, you see that? I'm telling you, I hang with you. I know, <laughs> I know I'm going in the right direction. Turnover. 3.32 to go, first half. Well, this has been a good one. Tensity's there. Both teams have shown mm -hmm. really good offense. And now have kind of settled into another defensive battle. Gaia sits, checks off to Stork. Stork turns the corner, takes a bump, and travels. Yeah, Might have gotten away with one earlier or two, but Mike, as you pointed out, took the bump, and that caused it, or whether it caused it or not, Fischel viewed it as a walk, so Whitehall will take over. Last year in the semis, Whitehall won 55-42. They have all but five points back. Lasticki had 16, Clock and Wine 15, and Bally had four. For Emmaus, Lindsey Gayasitz brings back 10 points from that game, but that's about it. Last possession, good help defense by the Hornets. Lindsey Gaius sits again, slithers down the lane with the dribble, Mike, and finds an opening and gets it up off the window for the Hornets to give them a two-point lead. I'd wager that that didn't happen too many times against Whitehall this year. When you're only giving up 40 points a game, you don't give up baskets like that. That's a great effort by Lindsey Gaius sits. Green Hornets by three. 33 is Melissa Hudak. Hudak had three. It was a three-pointer in their championship win over Strasburg. There she is. As we said, Lindsay Gayasitz is working on the other end, too, Mike. She has drawn Mary Lasicki and is staying to her, trying to deny her the ball as much as she possibly can. 
Weak side board for Balliette and a break for Emmaus as that one was missed at point blank range. Stork the other way, bodies fly, no call, and the rebound to Megan Balliette. Mike, that's a frustration foul. Megan Stork came in, Stork came in very strong and felt perhaps that there was a foul. Contact was made, and then obviously the ball went hard off the glass, and then she goes after it, and she picks up a foul. Maybe a little, little bit of it has to do with frustration and not getting the call she wanted. Wine a breather now for Whitehall as number 21 Jen Kostick has checked into their lineup, a 5'7 senior. And she gives Coach Payton a little over five points a game. And then here she is, and a little too long. Rebound to Emmaus. Gaya sits with the Green Hornets up two and another travel. Got to use the jump stop there. Mike, I stand corrected. Am I right? I'm looking at the board. That last foul was on number 32. They gave it to Lindsey Quay. That's who they get. That's okay, who they right, have so up there. So it wasn't Megan. I, I, excuse me. I, yeah, I don't want to give her any unnecessary fouls. Megan Stork just uh, upset there a little bit. Had a nice run there, Mike, in terms of using a jump stop, but didn't and got caught for the travel. Clock out to Lasicki, and Mary just checks over to the bench to see what's going on there. 21 is Kostic. 33 is Hudak. Oh, right now, good defense by the Hornets. They got, they got, I was going to say, they got him standing around there, the Whitehall Zephyrettes, but Meg, or excuse me, Mary Lissicki creates offense on her own. Mike did a good job there with a nice J. Good stroke. Number 43, Rachel Saginaw, which is into the Whitehall lineup, a freshman. There's two points for Tara Dillon. 25-23, Mace. It seems like every time Whitehall uh, tries to get a little closer, tie it up, or take the lead, Emmaus has an answer. They have led throughout most of the first half. We are winding down with 40 seconds to go. Looks like Whitehall Mike will pull out, hold the basketball for that final shot. What a very, very nice first half, though, mm -hmm. for both clubs. Oh, yeah. And both teams have some bright spots mm -hmm. defensively, offensive, rebounding. I mean, that's why we have a two-point game, and Whitehall's going to try and tie it up, or a three would give them the lead. Lasicki now with 12. Gives it up the clock. 21 is Kostic. Hudak. There's Lasicki, denied nicely by Gayasic. Mary still gets it off. Shot is short, and we are through. A very entertaining 16 minutes of basketball. Emmaus leading number one seed Whitehall by two, 25-23. There's a reason overhead door of Allentown is called the original. That's because we're the leader in the industry. Our superior construction, innovative technology, and professional sales and service set us apart. Our customers ask that they can have beauty and still have security. Once an overhead door, the answer is yes. Now that's original. The genuine, the original overhead door of Allentown. Look for us in the yellow pages under doors. I remember my mom going to Walter's Pharmacy. Now I go. Walter's fills my prescription needs quickly. When I can't get away, Walter's comes to me with free delivery. Walter's Pharmacy, making life easier through genuine care since 1937. Walter's Pharmacy, 401 North 17th Street in the Allentown Medical Center. Catch the best doggy in town at Willie Joe's. Whether it's steak sandwiches, hamburgers, or our world-famous chili dogs, try for yourself what everyone is raving about. We've been in Allentown tradition since 1945 with our original store at 15th and Liberty Streets or try our store on Lehigh Street just off of Route 309 next to Redner's where you can also enjoy the best steamed clams in town or an ice cold drink. Stop by Willie Joe's today. We're not just another fast food place. We're great food fast. D.E. Cressman Insurance Agency at 2310 Walbert Avenue in Allentown 
has been serving the Lehigh Valley for over 45 years. From business and life insurance to car and property, D.E. Cressman has the policy that will work for you. You're more than a customer when you decide to use their services. You become a member of a growing family. D.E. Cressman Insurance Agency. Call 433-1568. Okay. All right, welcome back. We are at the half here at Liberty High School. Emmaus leading Whitehall 25-23. And I think a couple of surprising things, Coach. I don't know. We have both seen these two programs. Of course, we do have two first-year coaches here, but we have seen these programs be very methodical, take their time, value each possession. Not that they're not doing that here tonight, but we really got into a track meet here for a while, and it was kind of interesting to watch. Yes, I think, as you pointed out, Mike, both coaches indicated to Al DeCarlo and others that they'd like to get more into a half-game offense, but I think signs of good basketball teams and a good coach is that if you see something's working go with it and both coaches saw that their teams were doing well in transition Mike getting the ball out doing a good job making good decisions with the basketball both the Hornets and the Zephyrettes and as a result they they did a good job there and the coach both coaches allowed it to to transpire that way and again nice nice effort on both sides of the of the line there Mike both clubs did a good job I thought overall with their offense well, and of course, both these programs have made a major mark in the history of District 11 basketball. Green Hornets winning district crowns under Linda Ippolito in 1976 and 1978. Their most recent one, of course, under Phil Armstrong in 1998. Of course, Coach Armstrong made a big mark when he was at Whitehall, winning district titles in 82, 84, 85, and 86. And the last district crown for Whitehall coming under the late John Shredda in uh, 1988 that a 4a crown but todd payton has already erased one of a uh, long dry spell they hadn't won a league crown since winning the east penn conference title in 88 and of course they won the mountain valley conference championship uh this year their only league loss whitehall by the way to liberty who is playing stroudsburg in the other semi-final emmaus's losses on the year they lost to downingtown wilson westlawn central catholic three times conwell egan and of course Allen High School. We want to remind our we want to remind our viewers quickly here that there's uh, other basketball going on around the Lehigh Valley. The 24th annual Joe McCarran Basketball Classic has a dozen teams from around the Lehigh Valley area. All games will be played at the Trexler Middle School gym. The classic will be held on consecutive Sundays through March, starting March 5th, with four first round games. And uh, Pioneers of Allentown take on Pattern Concrete of Allentown at 1 at 2.15. Upper Perky Open plays Smitty's of Allentown. Uh, Shammers of Bethlehem takes on uh, Ackies of Bethlehem. And at 7.15, Ringer's Roost of Allentown plays Keystone Drywall of Whitehall. The Classic continues over the next three Sundays with the championship game played on March 26th at 6 p.m. Wall-to-wall basketball. Who needs March Madness? We have one extra day in February, and I'll tell you, we're taking full advantage of it, aren't we? We're at the half, 25-23, back in a moment. <laughs> Let's go get Yako. You know it's always been the best. Let's go get Yako. Quality that beats the rest. They got cheesesteaks, french fries. The famous Yako hot dog is known worldwide. Let's go get Yako. The secret sauce is one of a kind. 
Yakos, an Allentown tradition. Hartsville's Pharmacy is family owned. We live in, work, and support our community. The pharmacists at Hartsville's do more than fill your prescription. They can give you peace of mind by offering a drug use review, medications, compounded prescriptions, hormone replacement therapy, and flavoring of your medications are just a few of our specialties. Hartzels has made the commitment to natural products. We carry a complete line of herbal products, vitamins, minerals, and homeopathic formulas. When it's personalized service you're looking for, request Hartzels. Our team of professionals will be... What do you see? They're not just houses. They're a reflection of your lifestyle. Spectrum Homes has designed a customer-oriented approach to home building involving your unique ideas to create a home for the way you live. We offer homes with realistic estimates, top quality features, and exciting new home plans for the year 2000. Now what do you see? See yourself at Walnut Ridge in Whitehall. Visit our model home or see us at spectrumhomes.com. Wally's Deli in Allentown and Emmaus is once again listed in Where the Locals Eat, a guide to the best restaurants in America. Wally's is listed under Best Sandwiches, and for good reason. Stop in at Wally's Deli and experience a super sandwich menu made from their own baked ham, roast beef, and quality boar's head meats. Try one of Wally's famous sandwiches or delicious homemade soups. And for your next party or occasion, make it happen with a Wally's Deli meat or party tray. Wally's Deli in Allentown and Emmaus. Let's take a look at some first half highlights and there are a lot of them. This is as good as it gets for any kind of player. Baseline move right, make it with the left hand. Vasicki now the three ball. She is fun to watch and we're going to get another year or two. Mm. Three eight off the dribble and that was a pass I believe from Mary into the hands of 44 Jen Clock. And Clock a great job of getting out in front of the pack. Handles the ball so well. Lasicki, the no look to Jen Clock. Now get a chance to see the, the Hornets there. Megan Stork getting to there. Good hustle by number 11, Jess Creeden. There's Lindsay Gaius has shown her ability to go to the window. Hornets again getting a deuce from the perimeter. Both teams played well on the offensive end. Both teams probably going to try to tighten up the defense in the second half. Well, let's take a look at the first half numbers, and this is the first I'm looking at him, and he may as 10 for 20. I think he'd take that any night of the week. Whitehall 8 of 24 with a 3.33%. Both teams championship caliber from the free throw line with Emmaus missing 2 of 7, and Whitehall perfect on their six tries. A two-point game, turnovers 8, Emmaus 5 for Whitehall, and boy, I'll tell you, that's something else. That's a sophomore on your left and a junior on your right. A dozen for Gaius, it's a 9 for Mary Lasicki. Rest of the scoring for Whitehall, none for Den Wine. Lasicki with the nine. Saganowicz, Amy with six. Jen Clock had eight. Balliette scoreless. And Kostick was scoreless. For Emmaus, Creedon two. Gaius hits the 12. Stork with two. Dylan two. Quay with five. And Silfies with two points. Third quarter coming your way. We are underway here, third quarter. Wine. <laughs> this is the first shot of the second half. Al DiCarlo has talked with both coaches. Al, what do you have for us? All right, Mike, I talked to Bill Pugh as he went into the locker room. He said too many points right away for Whitehall. He said his team didn't play good defensively in the first half, but he was happy the way the offense was running in the first half. For White on the Zephyrs, Todd Payton said they were definitely nervous and uptight coming in. Mayus gave them some, things, some looks that they haven't seen in a while. They missed some easy shots, but they got some shots that really weren't supposed to go. He said it's a tight game. He expects this one maybe go last possession. He will run some different offenses. Jen Clock, the Megan Stork mismatch. We'll probably see a little more of uh, Jen Clock on the offense tonight. All right, thanks, Al. 7.20 to go, third quarter. Emmaus up 25-23. Here's Lasicki. Looking to go inside, gets it there via the bounce, but it's poked away. Good defensive effort inside. That was Dylan poking that away. Here's Gaius, it's the other way. Stork, a little off balance, and the rebound to Megan Balliette. I'll tell you, she made up for it for the hustle, though, Mike. I didn't like the offensive move. Not a good decision to force the O at that time, but came back with some solid D, causing for the turnover. Hornets will put it in play. First turnover of the half against Emmaus. They uh, now have nine. Whitehall's turned it over eight times. 
six times, excuse me. And there's a deuce for Jess Creedon. And you created all up to four. Excuse me, Coach. Excuse me, Mike. I was just going to say, created by Lindsey Gaius. It's used the dribble, created some space, nice bounce pass. Nice finish by Jess Creedon. 27 23, Green Hornets. Jen Wine for three, short. Rebound. Poked out as Jen Clock is able to control. The Sicky will reset the offense. Down the lane. Rebound loose and dug out of there nicely by Creedon. Here's Dylan, saw mom and dad here again tonight. Creedon, it's the fourth straight year that Emmaus has played in the semifinals of the districts. 98, going to the finals and winning it all. Turnover taken away by Clock. Clock trying to push ahead of the pack. Takes on three Green Hornets and just simply out hustles them. And then another mistake on this end by Lindsey Gaius is stepping over, I believe, the line. But watch Jen Clock. It just goes nice and strong, Mike. Has a deflection there, good defense, but again, quick to the basketball for the putback. Alley Oak, Balliette has it poked away on a good effort by Lindsey Quay. Clock has it back. Still have that matchup. Good hands by Lindsey Gaius. It's just stripped. Mary Lasicki goes behind her back with the bounce. A little spin. Fakes going the other way with a little baby hook a little too strong. Yeah, probably nice sequence, adrenaline though, huh? flowing uh -huh. there a little bit, huh? But a turnover. Look at this. And the Hornets have it back. Stork has fouled in the act of shooting. They're pesky down there, Mike. They may not get the rebound, but the guards come around and just create problems. And Megan Stork, again, being very alert there. Good hustle by number 21, Tara Dillon. She gets it off the floor. And then Megan Stork gets the foul. She'll go to shoot, too. So good hustle on the part of the Hornets. Stork, a member of the field hockey program as well, had eight against Central Catholic in the conference championship game, coming off a 27.13 performance in their overtime win against Pleasant Valley. And Pleasant Valley, a very good basketball team this year, had a very good year. Stork knocks down the second, the lead back up to four, 29-25. Todd Painton, and this is the Zeth play. Okay, let's see what this set is, Mike. It looks like a one. Oh, it's a two-man game up front with Mary using the screen. Good use of the screen of number 44. I believe Jen Clock sets the wide-body screen. Allows Mary to use the dribble then, Mike, to create the rub off the screen and then turn the corner for a penetration or the jump shot. There we saw her getting fouled in the act of shooting. She'll shoot two. So, Zeph playing, we know, it's setting up Mary Lisicki for a little, little two-man game. Lasicki, a first-team conference all-star, despite only being a junior. Jen Clock was second team. Honorably mentioned, Megan Balliette. Uh, difference in foul shooting, Mike. Mary Lasicki, a one-eyed shooter. So the ball is in front. It's the old school. There's Phil Armstrong. Of course, and Bob Kratzer, the athletic director at Whitehall. Phil, of course, was the head coach at both of these programs, most recently at Emmaus. Guided them to four straight East Penn, or three straight East Penn Conference Championships. A pair for Lasicki and the lead down to two. Double team, it's a good one. Somehow, Stork's able to break out of the pack and dish to Creighton, who draws a foul. Well, Mike, that wasn't a pretty break of pressure but it was it was done it got, they got it broken down may have perhaps held the ball a little longer there does a nice job again and that's that senior experience Jess Creedon catches the ball so well in traffic has good hands holds on to it draws the foul the 5'8 senior will shoot two Creedon two points against Central seven against Pleasant Valley she had a career high 14 in the semifinals of the East Penn Conference 14 and 10 rebounds in their win over Allen for Creedon, who is just a 45% free throw shooter. Actually, she got uh, one of two. So 30-27, a three-point game. 
We crowd really starting to fill up, isn't it? Bethlehem Catholic, Saucon Valley coming your way next. We'll have it live on TV2. Good day. Stork has it rejected by Lasicki. What a beautiful effort on defense. There now Megan Stork again has tried that a number of times, Mike, using the dribble to get the defense out of position to score. Mary Lasicki got hurt early, decides I'll back off, I'll let you commit, then I'll attack. Smart move on Mary's part, she won that battle. 30-27, approaching the midpoint of period number three. Todd Payton is assisted by Joe Krempaski, Michelle Geiger, who is a Whitehall grad, and recently, December, just graduated from East Stroudsburg and Shannon Monroe. Blocked inside, and now the Green Hornets will go the other way. Here comes Quay. Little trouble, dishes down to Stork. Stork. Little square, that time she was able to get squared and knocked it home. Square with the jump stop, as you pointed out, Mike, under control. Nice soft touch in the paint for the little four foot jet. Pattern that developed in the first half of this game continues here in the third quarter. Every time Whitehall looks like they might take a run or take the lead, Emmaus has an answer. Whistle and a foul here will send Jen Wine to the stripe. Personal on Emily Silfie's number 22, her second, team's fourth. Good idea of Emily Silfie's. Mike just didn't get there in time. Draws the foul. Wine, good free throw shooter, 65 percenter. She's second on the team in threes and averaging just a shade over under 10 points a game. Of course, Big game at Skin. Stroudsburg had 17 points and two threes. 32-29. Here's Stork yeah. has numbers and bounces to Creedon. The board. Still in the board. Yes, sir. Well, you look at Emmaus. I think they are all playing with the sense of urgency here tonight. They're focused. Good decision again here by Megan Stork to get it out. There we see Jess Creed not using the board. Maybe like to use the glass there but good offensive put back by number 21 Tara Dillon the 5'7 junior knocks it down for the Hornets TD knocks down the three-point play and Emmaus has their largest lead 35 to 29 after three periods of play if you don't want to know this score just hit that mute button on your uh, on your recorder there. They are through three at Parkland with Liberty leading Stroudsburg 45-43. We get a good look at Megan Stork here, Mike, using the dribble. There's the great jump stop that frees her in the paint area where she can focus, keep those shoulders nice and square. Good release of the ball. Nice soft touch in the paint. Mm, some good stuff. 35-29, our story here. Emmaus has led throughout most of this contest. It's been kind of back and forth in terms of, you know, the runs and keeping it close, but Emmaus has opened up a six-point lead. Lasicki in the paint, hand check foul. And again, that rule changed just a couple of years ago. If there is any contact, just a hand resting on a hip, when a player is in motion towards the basket, the officials are supposed to call a foul. There's supposed to be no physical contact whatsoever. Lindsey Gaya sits back into the Green Hornet lineup. Personal foul on Sophie. Is that her third? Team's fifth. Ball mishandled inside. And a turnover. Number 11 against Whitehall. Each team now with 11 turnovers. Gaya sits, pulls it out, and will restart the offense. Little 1-4 set here by the Hornets to allow Lindsey Gayas at some room up there. Nice board by Jess Creeden. Gets it back out to Lindsey for the resetting the table for the Hornets. But I like the offensive set. Mike spreads out the help defense. Doesn't allow them to isolate on the help side. Good Coach, cut. Coach Quay Creeden as Gayasit scores and will go to the line. And Dylan have played a tremendous game here tonight inside for the Green Hornets. And Lindsey Gaya sits, if we get a chance to look at it, Mike, she knows the defense isn't jumping to the ball. So as a result, she's making a good, strong cut to the basket. If the defense doesn't jump to the basketball, you're going to beat the, the girl to the spot every time. Good delivery of the ball. Good recognition on Lindsey's part. Green Hornets, the number five seed in the tournament. Whitehall, the number one seed. So far, it's been Emmaus. 37-29, entry pass, passed away. 
Looks like the, the Zaffaretta are just a little bit flustered right now, Mike. Not happy with that decision and the catching of, not catching of the basketball. Good opportunity for the young Green Hornets now to get another basket to extend this to perhaps 10. Had five ties in this game, three lead changes, all in the first half as Lasicki comes up with yet another block and then a block foul will be called on Quay. Uh, Mary did a great job there again defensively, boy. She really is playing some smart defense at times, Mike. Just waiting for the offense to commit and then using some defensive skills. Here's a nice help coming down from the top. The girls, uh, in this case, number 32, Lindsey Quay, exposed the basketball. Mary canceled the opportunity to score. Lasicki, Jen Wine, Wine tripped. And this now will be a shooting foul because this will be the seventh against Emmaus. Young basketball teams, Mike, in pressure situations tend to get a little aggressive and foul. That's a uh, fact that young coaches have to deal with with young players. They want to play hard and aggressive, but sometimes they make foolish fouls. This team at time has made some bad decisions in regard to the second half about when to really go after someone and play defense with your feet, not get caught for those reach fouls. Zeps is a team, a 62% free throw shooting team. And that's certainly one way for the Zephyrets to get back in this one. The clock's not running. Get an opportunity to go to the line, cut it down to six, and they do, 37-31. Whitehall right now is staying in this game via the free throw line. They are 12 for 12. 37-31. They have gotten 12 of their 31 points from the free throw line. There's a block defensively. Ball poked. Last touch by Emmaus. Here come the Zeps. Clock in the paint. Little bump. No call. Rebound. Green Hornets. Dillon out past midcourt. Better watch where she passes that one. And who Gaius had just got past the timeline. Hello. A three-pointer for Megan Stewart. They said she was in his zone, Mike, and she was wide open, and the young lady did not hesitate. Caught it, squared, and fired. Green Hornets by nine. Lasicki short, but has the board. And a foul. Good second effort for Mary Lasicki. And again, Whitehall will go back to the free throw line, looking to add to a perfect 12 for 12 night. Good move on Mary Lasicki's part, Mike. Saw the opportunity to penetrate, followed her shot, got the foul on the follow-up. Averaging just a shade under 14 points a game, and I think one of the impressive things when you watch Mary play is, you know, you think of, you know, uh, you know her and her credentials and you know, she doesn't shoot the ball a lot, really. You know, she looks to get other people involved, is selective with her shots. Mm -hmm. That's why she's such a talent, talented player and a very good player. My scores create their offense and know when to help their teammates to get them in a position to score. And Mary makes very good decisions with the basketball, both on the offensive end, and we know she can play some real solid defense. She's demonstrated that tonight already. 14 of 14 now from the, uh, on the line for Whitehall, and now it's kind of a parade back and forth as Quay draws a foul and will go to the line for Emmaus with 107 to go third quarter. Might be a change of defense here, Mike, because she's really wide open. You might be looking at it maybe a little bit of zone, but Quay, again, good recognition from the top side by, I guess that was Gaius Hitz that got it to her. And Quay Person now make, we'll go ahead and shoot the foul. Personal foul on Lasicki, her second. Sub in for Emmaus is number 23, Ashley Grossman, sister to Missy Grossman, and Gaiusic will catch a breather. Coach wants to rest Lindsay, I'm sure, for that stretch run coming up at the start of the fourth quarter. They're enjoying an eight-point lead right now. Missed the second. 104 left in this one, third quarter. Lasicki stepping up to the three ball. Yes, sir! 41-36, Emmaus. Boy, did that look easy, huh? Well, there are Lindsay Gaius, when she's in there, she realizes that she always picked up Mary Lasicki a lot sooner. Defensive person didn't get there in time, Mike. Mary's a very, very good perimeter shooter. Took advantage of a miscue. Here's Ionet, three up from midcourt. Here's Stork the other way with 37 to go. Wow, what a tough shot for Megan Stork. Looks like there was pretty good defense there, almost a double team by the Zephyrettes, Mike, but Megan Stork found a way to see the basket, nothing but nylon. 
Stork, of course, only a sophomore, the, the sister to Andy Stork, who was just such a great athlete at Durham High School. 15 ticks to go, Lasicki holding, they're down 43-36. Mary will settle for the jump shot, back to back for Mary Lasicki in the lead, cut to five, 43-38. Here's Stork the other way, high on the dribble, regains and knocks it off! Oh, and he won a basketball game, 45-38 Emmaus, we are through three. What are you doing here at ABE Car Care Center? I'm having my machine winterized with ABE Car Care's 12-point winter checkup. Oh, they inspect your brakes, your battery, your tires, your wiper plates, the filter, everything. Yep, they get it ready for all that ice, snow, and cold weather that's coming. Well, you made a good decision to get it checked out before the bad weather gets here. You know me, save money in the long run. What do you do with all your money? I'm saving for my pot of gold. Gold for the gold. You already got the pot. Nice. Well, here's Mary Lasicki stepping up to it like you're at the Allentown Fair and looking to win a QB doll. And then the other way, maybe got away with one there. Stork was able to track it down and turn fire. You see the shot clock expired with the ball in the air. We are through three. There's your scoring by quarters. Two teams that give up. Emmaus allows 45 a game. Whitehall allows 40 points a game, has already given up 45 here through three quarters. We have eight minutes to go in regulation. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this one. It has been a classic. Both teams have really elevated their offense for this semifinal game for 4A District 11 title. Getting hoping to get into that title round, playing the winner, playing the winner of the Liberty Stroudsburg game being played at Parkland as we speak. Creedon, baseline, kicks to Quay. Quay, the left-hander, and in. Wow. Coach, I can't recall the last girls game we've done where we have seen so many things happen offensively. So many players, you know, really elevate their game on offense. A lot of times it's the team that plays the best defense. Good point, Mike. They're really doing a nice job in the two- and three-man sets. Here's Lasicki, guarded now by Gayasic, who checked back in in between periods. Alley open, an errant pass. They're one of the few poor decisions by Mary Lasecki. 47-38. Gayasitz has Stork. Megan Stork has found the eye. They work a little two-girl game. Contact, no foul, offensive board to Jess Creedon. Boy, Jess Creed, Mike, has a nose for the basketball. She's always going to the boards on missed shots or on attempted shots, I should say, and does a great job of tracking it down and getting it into the, in the hands of the Hornets. Lindsey Gayasets now will run the offense. Sounds kind of strange. We have 6.28 to go, but at some point you'd have to think that Bill Pugh would think, I mean, he might be a bucket. I mean, he's nine up now. If he can get that to 11 or 12, start to try and control the clock, I would think. That's time management is going to become a factor, Mike, as you point out. Let's see what happens in the next couple of minutes. And for the Zephyr, then they really have to get on it in an offensive. There's a turnover again, the second one, unforced. And good hands by number 32, Lindsey Quay. And isn't that a smart decision by Quay to slow it down? I, you know, I don't you got think it. that it's too early to start thinking about that. They get a couple of solid possessions here. They have control of this basketball game. Largest lead of the game is at nine right now. Dylan. And you can look at every one of those Green Hornet players and say each has made a major contribution to where they are right now. Gayasic's baseline checks off. Now in some trouble and double dribbles. All right, Lindsey Gayasic again. We'll learn. Gave up the bounce, Mike, on the baseline, and that caused for there to pick up the dribble. Good pressure by the Zephyrettes there, causing the turnover. Third quarter numbers, excuse me, Coach. He may have 7 of 15 with a 3. 47%, 5 of 8 from the line. We have seen great free throw shooting here tonight by both teams. 63%, 20 points, 3 turnovers. Whitehall just 3 field goals on 11 shots, 1 of 3. 8 for 8 from the line. That's what's keeping them in this game. 15.7 turnovers. Mayus following, wanting a travel there. Didn't get it. And now there's a whistle and a foul against the Green Hornets. Yep. 
looking at Jen Clark may have lost her balance and perhaps got away with a, a walk there but the foul certainly occurred and officials on top of the foul so Jen Clark will go to the line she'll get to shoot the two absolutely keeping the Zephs in the game that is 15 for 15 from the free throw line well, we talked about it all season long, Mike, is how important the foul in is part of your offensive package. And here's a perfect example of a team who's struggling a little bit from the perimeter and scoring a field goal, but making up for it at the foul line. Their first miss, but now there's a foul on the board, and they're going to get Megan Balliette for this one. This will be a non-shooting foul. The 16 foul against the Mays, so the next one will put both teams in the bonus. Subs checking in for both teams. Excuse me, number 33 for Whitehall is Melissa Hudak. Also coming in, 43, Rachel Saganowicz. Might be a press set team, Mike, that coach is going to with the 520 left in this one. Kind of pressure up a little bit more double off the dribble if possible. We'll have to watch and see if that's his move on the defensive end. Saganowicz sisters are cousins to the Nasty Boys. Those, that wrestling duo from Whitehall High School. 5.04 to go. Fourth quarter. Here's Dillon. Good seal. Entry. Creedence got it, but misses the peeper, has the board, and then smartly comes back out with it. And again, oh, there's I that like, time. Yeah. I like the decision Jess Creed makes with the basketball, Mike. She doesn't force anything. Didn't get frustrated. Did a great job sealing. Was a little too strong off the window. Got the board, though. Didn't panic. Kicked it out to a teammate. They reset. Creedon, baseline, checks off. Here's Dillon. Mayus looking to return the favor to the Zephyrettes who knocked them out of last year's tournament. Mm -hmm. Mayus was the league champ in the number one seed. This year it's reversed. And a timeout charge this one to the Mayus bench. And Bill Pugh with 4.22 to go. And his team up 47-39. Well, Peyton's going to have to make Peyton's uh, going to have to make some decisions. Todd Peyton, head coach of the Zephyrettes, Mike, because with 4:22 left, it's obvious that uh, Bill Pugh is going to go into a somewhat of a delay. Use a little clock now. Clock management becomes an important part. He's going to have to counter with pressure to force the tempo of the basketball game. Try and get him to use the bounce, get it on the floor, double team, and rotate out. Take away some passing lanes to create some offense off his D. Each team with two full timeouts and a 20. We have 4.22 to go in regulation. Emmaus leading 47-39. We had five ties in the first, all coming in the first half. We had three lead changes. Emmaus took a 4-2 lead at 6.46 of the first quarter. Whitehall took a 29-20-19 lead at the 3.59 mark of the second period. Emmaus came back to take the lead at 23-21 at 2.50 of the first half, and they have not trailed since. And Rich, you made the point at the beginning, so important if you are the so-called underdog in these games to get off to a good start, put some doubt into the favorite's mind, and that is exactly what is Emmaus has done here tonight. Do want to remind our viewers that on the year, Emmaus has played five Mountain Valley Conference teams, and it's a perfect 5-0. and oh. Of the four Whitehall losses, three of them have been to East Penn Conference teams. Central, Duroff, and Allen are three of the four Whitehall losses this year. Their lone league loss was the Liberty as they wound up 15-1 and one in league play. Good decision by Lindsay Gayas to use the timeout there. Didn't really free anybody up on that out of bounds play. The Hornets are going to have to use some screens now and, and use those screens wisely to get A, the ball in bounds, and then B, to run their offense. So coach has regrouped with his, his Green Hornets now, set the play, first order of business, get it in successfully. Second, get a good opportunity to score or get fouled. Last year, Emmaus beat Nazareth 60-29 in the round one. Whitehall beat Liberty 43-32. In the semis, Whitehall beat Emmaus 55-42 before losing to Easton 43-30 in the championship game. Of course, Easton has been eliminated from the tournament. And Megan Storch there couldn't get a handle on it. Mike, you got to come out. We've talked about it every time. Pressure comes. You got to come out and catch the basketball first. That's the most important thing. Don't cut that cut to the to the uh, foul line extended short. That's what the miscue is. There we get Mary Lasicki to elevate for a little 12 footer. That looks too easy. I tell you, 47, 41, 20 for Mary Lasicki. 
And I think if you sat here without a stat guy and someone asked you how many she'd had, you'd never say 20 to this point. Whistle and a foul will send Lindsey Gayasich to the stripe. Yes, on the year, this has been their kind of game because when they fall behind and maybe have to rely on the three, they only have 14 threes on the entire season. Gayasich has five, Stork with six, Emily Gayasich has two, and Jess Creeden has one. Now, fatigue might be a part of this now, Mike. You saw Lindsey Gayasich there. Came up a little bit short on that foul shot, so we're pushing down that last three or 40, three minutes, 44 seconds. Again, she really had, saw there, took, a, again, a little extra oomph with those knee flex, which was smart. Use your legs in that foul shooting and did a good job of getting it. 48-41. Remember, this is the first of four coming your way tonight on TV2. Boys 3A, Becca and Saucon Valley coming up next live. And then same night coverage of Stroudsburg Liberty at about 9.30. And then at 11 o'clock, it'll be Becca, or excuse me, Central and Lee Heighton 3A boys. Zephyrette's missing opportunity time becoming very, very important. 3.15 to go. They're in trouble now. Good job of bailing. And Megan Storch bail bailed her out on the baseline, Mike. Again, giving up that dribble. You don't want to do that. If you want to know, I have a final on the other semifinal game between Liberty and Stroudsburg. If you do not, hit the mute button as Tara Dillon has two more points for Emmaus. A final from Parkland. 4A girls. Liberty 60, Stroudsburg 49. Big comeback there. Very good comeback for Coach Tone. Down at halftime and came back. 60-49, earned the right to get into the finals. John Tone's brother is right here. He's been checking on <laughs> that, that score. Yeah, now? I'm telling he is. He's been back every 30 seconds since <laughs> the half. But a good job. by Congratulations to Coach Tone and the Liberty basketball team. They've earned the right to go for the... 4A district title. And they'll play the winner here. Lasicki back to the free throw line. This one far from over. It's mm -hmm. an eight-point game. Makes this, Mike, sure the Zephyrettes will show you a full-court press set, either man or zone, probably man to man. Missed it. Good board there by Jess Creeden, though. Takes away the opportunity for the Zephyrettes to get into any full-court pressure. Just the second miss of the night from the line. It's an eight-point game. Good double, good read by Megan Stork to get it inside. Again, excellent movement by the Hornets on that first double team. Play in trouble and a foul against Whitehall. Well, still a one and one there. That's only the eighth team foul. So number 32, Lindsey Quay will get an opportunity, Mike, to get there. Lindsey coming into tonight's game shooting around 58%. So obviously, scouting has been done, and coaches have made decisions as to who they want to foul in the closing 221 of this one. 59 of 102 on the year. Of course, he may have, through the leadership of Phil Armstrong, who always used the free throw line to their advantage. Don't get it there. Here's Lasicki the other way. Wine, tough angle. Look at Lasicki come in to try and get the board. Jen Wine had it, but Gayasich takes it away. She had numbers if she wanted it, but it is clear that Emmaus has gone into a back-off mode here and worked the clock. Two minutes to go. Ball handling demonstration there by Lindsay Gayasich. Handled the rock so nicely to deliver it to the guard. She's going to be the go-to person right now, Mike, as far as taking care of the basketball. Young lady's a little tired, though. She's been working in the defensive end trying to cover Mary Lasicki. Reach and foul. I believe they have number 43, Rachel Saganowicz. Well, again, Jess Creeden now will go to the line. Mike shooting around 45% from the foul line. So they certainly would like to keep the ball in the in Lindsey Gayasit's hands, shooting 68, 70% from the foul line and hopefully uh, converting at the foul line. But right now it's up to Jess Creeden. She'll get the chance to shoot the one-on-one. -on -one. Looks like we have a timeout on the floor. Mike Whitehall calls timeout, a full timeout. Whitehall, after starting the year two and three, this much like the boys, started the year two and three. They have won seven, they had won 17 straight at one point, then lost to Deeroff, but they have won 19 of their last 20 ball games, including beating Stroudsburg. 
65-47 for the conference crown. They are in all kind of trouble here, however, trailing by eight with 144 to go. You know, it's amazing, Coach, how this was a very high-scoring game at one point. Now you look at it with a buck 44 to go. Now the numbers are kind of adding up. Emmaus gives up 45 a game. Whitehall has scored 42. The difference here is Emmaus offensively has taken a team that averages just 40 points defensively a game and has scored 50. Creeding to the line. She missed her first and made her second so far tonight. She's one for two. That dips in and out, and the rebound to Lasicki. Still life for Whitehall. Here they come. Let's see who picks up Mary Lasicki on the defensive end. Lindsey Gayasic has her. They're going to definitely look to get screens for her. And again, Lindsey Gayasic is right there to contest as best she can. Someone else is going to have to step up, Mike. Wine's got it. Oh, is that a fine wine from Jen? 9.5 to go. It's a five-point game. That's a big three. Very big five-point game, as you pointed out. And somebody else. Good steal here. Here's Hudak and a foul on Gayasic. Lots of time. 109. And this the 10th team foul, Coach. Good eye, as yep. this will be a two-shot foul now for Melissa Hudak. As you pointed out, boy, it was a fine time for Jen Wine to tickle the twine. <laughs> we were both getting caught speeding here a little bit now, huh? Fine wine. <laughs> but they're in right the in it now, Mike. Oh, Down four. In the meantime, they just continue to line it up from the free throw line. A pair for Hudak, who we don't even have an average on. And we have a three-point game with 105 to go. 50-47. Gayasic, guarded by Wine. Big possession now by the Hornets to make sure they don't turn this over. They've got to come up with something, Mike. They either a trip to the Fallon or a bucket. We're under a minute. Ball's loose. Lasicki's got it and calls timeout. 47 ticks to go. It's a three-point game with a heads-up play. And Hornets just mishandled the basketball here, Mike. Just didn't catch the ball, and Mary Lasicki right on top of it before they have a chance to get a held ball. Mary smartly calls the timeout, preserves the possession. 47 seconds left. They close the gap to within three. Winner moves on. The loser is finished for the year. The winner not only moves on and has an opportunity to play for a championship, but also clinches a spot in the upcoming state tournament. So such a big, big night. Really, Coach, when you look at both these programs for young teams, I mean, to get, you know, two more games added on, I mean, that, that's big stuff for these coaches and their development, and even if you look ahead. Oh, I agree. I think, again, both teams would love to continue on, as you point out, and get involved in the, the district final as well as that first round of states. And the next 47 seconds will determine which one will move on and which one will go home for the season. 47.8 seconds to go. Well, let's see what the coaches put together here, Mike, from a defensive standpoint. And there's no doubt now Mary Lasicki will, will draw Lindsey Gayasic on the defensive end. And they really don't need a three right away. No. 44 seconds is an awful lot of time. They isolate for Lasicki. Wine who hit that big three moment ago, and they turn it over. Turnover, and then Whitehall forced the foul, will send Stork to the free throw line. Well, just as the Hornets turned it over to give the Zephyrettes a chance to get back in it, that tit for tat here, Mike, it happened on the other side. Now watch, there's the pass, it's just again, a good deflection, number 20, making Stork got a hand on it, and a good recovery there by Lindsey Quay for the Hornets. Oh, love that replay, didn't see that at first. Stork indeed did tip that one away. Emmaus 16 of 20 from the line. Whitehall 19 of 21. Well, that one I don't know. This is the important one because it makes it a two-possession game. This is the one that counts, Mike. A two-possession game. Let's see if the young girl can handle it. She knows what she has to do. First thing, if those knees bend nice and smoothly, Mike, it's nothing but net. Now she got more flex that time. There you you called it, Coach. She didn't get the knee flex in That's the first one. It's a four-point game. Zeps have to go and go in a hurry. No foul here, Mike. Don't foul the shooter. Just contest. Clock. 
25 seconds. Jen goes baseline, whistle, and a foul. And that's exactly what they did with 23.5 to go. A lot of time yet. Got a two-shot foul here. Here's the uh, penetrating move by Jen Clock. Smart move again. Take the ball to the basket. Force the defense down, Mike, to make some adjustments. Draw the foul. Get the two-shot foul. Allows you to get a press set. A lot of time left. 23 seconds. Fox got the first. Outstanding free throw shooting here tonight by both teams. 51-49. Let's see if they clear for Lindsey Gay assist to handle it. She does a great job, Mike, of using the, the dribble. Now they got to make sure they don't turn it over. Give a foul. Smart move on the part of the Zephyrettes. Gave a foul to Tara Dillon. Again, Tara only shooting around 54%, Mike. Well... With a two-point lead, if she gets one, obviously Whitehall needs a three. There's 13.2 seconds to go, and if Dylan can get two here, it could look real bleak for the Zephyrettes. Not to say that it would be over, but it would take close to a miracle, and Dylan smoothly strokes home the first. What did you say, 54% or huh? Yeah, well, it's time to step up, Mike, and I think the young lady knows it, and she bagged the first, but not the second. Three-point game, Zeps with an opportunity to tie and immediately will take a timeout. 11.1 to go. Well, now we're going to see strategy, Mike, because you know Jen Wine just knocked down a triple before. We know Mary Lasicki is an excellent arc shooter. She can get the ball up very quickly. How they're going to defend, who they're going to decide to take, to allow to take the shot, obviously free to tie to get it in, into the OT. Certainly they don't want to foul. Want to alert our viewers... Two things happened tonight. There was an accident on Route 22. Emmaus basketball team was involved in it. Make a long story short, we got on the air late tonight, so games will be running a little bit later. We had advertised Saucon Valley and Bethlehem Catholic at 8 o'clock. That obviously not going to happen, as we are 5 of 8 already here. And we have 11 seconds to go, and if Whitehall knocks down a 3, we could be looking at overtime. So all the games will be pushed back a little bit, and we certainly appreciate your patience in those situations. We'll get them all on. They will just be running a little bit later. Our story, 52-49 Emmaus, with 11.1 seconds to go, and the Green Hornets will pick up full court. Smart decision, Mike. You want to eat a little clock here. Containment press. Don't let them break you down. Keep the ball in front of you at all times. Contest, but don't foul the three-point shooter. Lasicki's got a three. It's short. Rebound dug out of there. Creedy's got it. One. The upset is over. He may have. Has returned the favor from a year ago. They beat Whitehall, the number one seed, 52 to 49. Well, that sets up a District 11 4A final that I think will surprise a lot of people. And of course, if you don't want to know the final of that girls game, just the mute button real quick because the final now will set up Emmaus meeting Liberty for the girls 4A championship. Coach, what a basketball game here tonight. You hate to see either of these teams walk away a loser, Mike. Somebody has to win, as we know, and certainly both teams gave it, uh, uh, did a great job tonight of playing that intense basketball that you expect during this championship week when people are fighting for their lives to move on to get into the finals and congratulations for, to Emmaus on the victory and certainly congratulations to the Zephyrettes on the performance they demonstrated tonight. Now, a lot of times we'll see a game that can be a little ragged at times and you know one team survives you know really both teams tonight at times played good enough to win this game. Very impressed with both teams how they handled themselves offensively and defensively did a very good job of showing the ability to handle the pressure tonight and to move on. Emmaus again, though, just had a little bit more when they needed and, and survived 52-49. Oh, we saw great free throw shooting. We saw some timely defense at times. We certainly saw as much offense as we've seen out of a girls game in such a long time. Such talent. Aldo Carlo has moved into position now with winning head coach Bill Pugh. And of course, in his first year since taking over for Phil Armstrong, this has to be his biggest win. Let's go courtside with Aldo Carlo. All right, Mike, thanks a lot with Bill Pugh. And, Coach, uh, we knew this one was going to come down the wire. You talked about it before the game, and that's exactly what it did. That's it. Good, very good game. Whitehall played a great game. 
I thought the foul shooting at the end was going to kill us, but the girls picked it up and came through big on defense at the end. How big of a win is this for this program? Um, you know what? Every win's big, but we've worked real hard this year. These girls have come a long way. No one gave them a chance at all in the beginning of the year, and here we are ready for the district title. Talk about uh, Lindsey Gayes tonight and Megan Storm. You know what? Lindsey Gayes sits, ran the show. She did a great job of handling our offense. What can I say about Megan? Megan, I said it in the paper Friday night, finds things that aren't there, and they're there. Well, you're not only going to the district final, of course, you're clinched at the state playoff. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right, that's Bill Pugh, and we'll bring in Megan Stork. And, uh, Megan, uh, a great night in your part tonight. Uh, you get the W, and you guys look like you were excited there at the end. Yeah, um, I didn't know what was going to happen, you know, today. We, I didn't seem like that, we were that pumped up, but, you know, we just came out, and we knew that we had to, we had to get through this win to get to do um, a chance for district, and that's what we wanted since the beginning of the year, so we just knew we had to come out with a W today. Take me through that bucket at the end of the third, you, you had that nail biter at the, at the buzzer. I don't know, I just turned around and no one was on me and just shot it and went in. And here down the stretch you had those key free throws, what was going through your mind? You knew you wanted that free throw and then you put your hand up. Um, I just, I knew that I was, I, there was a going to be a, I don't know. You're just excited. You're heading yeah. to the district final and the state playoffs. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. Well, Mike, it was a team effort. Bill Pugh said before the game the biggest key for them tonight was playing as a team because they didn't do that all year. Well, they played as a team tonight, and they win it, and they're going to the district championship. Back to you. Yeah, no doubt about it. Throw in Tara Dillon, uh, Kerry Monroe, Lindsey K. Emily Silky's off the bench. Jess Creedon. Fabulous effort on all their parts, no question. Absolutely. Team effort, Mike, on both ends of the court led to the big W tonight. Want to certainly wish, uh, you know, nothing but the best for graduating seniors from Whitehall. Jen Wine, Jen Kostick, uh, Melissa Hudak, Jen Clock. And that's all they lose, so they should be uh, in good position uh, again uh, uh, next year. And I know Coach Leagues look at these kind of things. What does this statement say about the strength of play in the East Penn Conference? You look at a team like Whitehall is going to close the books on a 21-5 and record, and four of those five losses came to four of the five East Penn Conference schools. Well, certainly the East Penn Leagues, it, it tells you, it said they're sending a message in terms of the talent that they have. And again, it's a small league, but certainly, the, especially in the girls program like a lot of parity in East Penn League Conference and I think it demonstrate it tonight demonstrates that parity in terms of here's Emmaus who fought their way in a position didn't win the East Penn League Championship lost to Central Catholic but showed the ability to recover and come back and do a good job in the semis. Well Todd Payton has graciously joined our Al DiCarlo let's hear his comments Al. All right Mike thanks a lot and Todd you told me at halftime that this was going to come down to the final possession and it really did. Well you know we were behind all game and we fought and scratched and clawed and tried to do things and tried to run plays. And, you know, Emmaus just came out, and you got to give them a lot of credit. They played their game. They went to their strengths and uh, made some shots, and we just could never get over the hump. What about your team? Uh, you guys really hung in there the whole time. Is from the free throw line, 20 of 22 from the free throw line, but you guys pride yourself all year long on that. Well, you know, I, I felt like our kids will always be in the game. They're, they're a tough a bunch of kids. I give them a lot of credit. We've been through a long year and a good year. Um, we just came up short just a little short one shot here or there maybe you know one turnover less here or there and be in the game coach thanks for taking some time and uh, congratulations on a great season okay thanks a lot. all right that's todd baton and mike that will do it from down here we'll send it back to you i don't think there's any question on that and coach thank you for your uh, graciousness in coming and chatting with al there i know this has to be a tough moment 21 and 5 the final record for whitehall and they win the mountain valley conference championship we're going to take a short break be back to wrap up this first one in just a moment stay right where you are for just a little while, they're your responsibility. Yeah. So you want to give them the best protection possible. At Hope and Rope, we've earned a reputation for providing superior protection at competitive rates. Auto insurance, home and business insurance, life insurance. Erie Insurance, a promise of service you can count on. Your independent Erie agent in the Lehigh Valley is Chris Robel. Call today. If Shoremark Anything Goes carpet is tough enough to withstand the foot traffic of Atlanta's International Airport, imagine how great it will look in your home. Shoremark Anything Goes won't mat or crush like other carpets. It's the best performing carpet you can buy. So 
you can count on lasting beauty, even if your home's like Grand Central Station. Showmark, name you can stand on. Visit our new expanded showroom, North 3rd Street in Whitehall. Gogol's Independent Auto Parts, located on 3928 Mock Chunk Road in Ironton, just across from the Ironton Elementary School, is proud to sponsor today's Parkland Trojans game. Gogol's Auto Parts has been serving area residents for the past eight years. Notary public services are also available. Call Gogol's Auto Parts at 610-799-3261. It's where you should go for all your auto parts needs. Fast, exciting, family entertainment, professional basketball, Stabler Arena, the Pennsylvania Valley Dogs. 15 home games starting Saturday, April 29th, featuring head coach Daryl Dawkins. For season ticket information or group outings, call 610-250-9800. Welcome back. Emmaus moving on to the district championship game. We'll be played on Friday night. Here is your final count. Creedon, five points. Gaius, it's 15. Stork, 14. Dylan, eight. Quay, eight. Sophie's, two. They needed balance, and they got it here tonight. Just 13 of 24 from the line. Their final free throw shooting, not as good as it was throughout the game. For Whitehall, Wine with seven. Lasicki wound up with 21. Saganovich, Amy wound up with six. Clock wound up with 13. Hudak with two. They wound up 20, 20 of 22 from the free throw line. They had 13 field goals on the night. That's a wrap for game number one. 52-49 or finally Mayus eliminates Whitehall in girls 4A competition. For Rich Baxa, stat guy Billy Bickle, our director and producer tonight is Mr. Andy Himmelwright. For courtside reporter Al DiCarlo, for all of us here at TV2 Sports, I'm Mike Zambelli. Back in a couple of minutes.